Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at an interesting question that was on an Oxford entrance exam that stumped a lot of students applying. So let's see if we can give it a good shot. So, it gives us uh, an equation in terms of the function f of x without giving us the function. It tells us that 6 plus f of x equals 2 times f of negative x plus 3x squared times the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of t dt. And it asks us to find the value of the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of x dx. And I'm going to call that value i. It's going to be a constant, of course, because it's a definite integral. And so, bearing in mind that we've called that i, the first thing I'm going to do is swap this integral from negative 1 to 1 in f of t dt with an i. Because, of course, our variable of integration doesn't really affect anything about um, what the value of it's going to be. The integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of u du will be equal to the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of x dx. So, we're looking at our equation and we might be thinking, what's our next step going to be? And some of you who have done quite a lot of calculus might have spotted what I spotted, which is that we've got a 3x squared here. What does that remind us of? It reminds us of something that's been differentiated by power rule because it's got a coefficient that's one greater than its power. So given that we're looking for the value of an integral and we've got a term here that looks like it's been differentiated, it seems like a sensible thing to integrate on both sides of our equation. And of course, we can do that as long, because as long as you do the same thing on either side of an equal sign, it will always remain true. So we're going to be looking at the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 6 plus the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of x dx, which, of course, is just i, because we've already called the value of whatever that is i. And that's equal to 2 times the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of negative x plus 3i times the integral from negative 1 to 1 of x squared with respect to x. Okay, so this part, very simple. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So we're going to be looking at ix cubed evaluated between the bounds of 1 and negative 1. That's going to be 1 minus minus 1. So we're going to have 2i over here. Uh, this integral from negative 1 to 1 of 6 is, of course, going to become 6x evaluated between the bounds of 1 and negative 1, which is going to be 6 minus minus 6, which is 12. And so all we've got to consider now is this last integral here. Now, we don't know much about the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of minus x dx, but we do know that we've called i, and the thing that we're looking for is the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of x dx. So if I make the substitution u equals negative x, which of course means that du is going to equal negative dx, let's see what happens. Well. That means that when u is negative 1, x is going to approach 1, and as x approaches 1, u is going to approach negative 1. And so this is going to be equal to negative 2 times the integral from 1 to negative 1 of f of u du. And many of you may know this rule. If you haven't, when we have a negative, outside of a definite integral, it allows us to swap the bounds. And actually, I'll leave a proof for that uh, as an exercise for you guys to try down below. It's quite easy to prove. Uh, and this means that this is equal to 2 times the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of u du. And as we said earlier, the value of this integral doesn't is independent of the variable as long as the bounds are the same. And so this value is just i, which means after all of this work, we can swap here for just i. So we've solved it, right? Because that means that 12 plus i equals 4i, which means that 12 equals 3i, which means that our integral must be equal to 4. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's a bit of a shorter one this time. I just wanted to do a quick problem. 
And as a challenge in the comments, I'll ask, can you find uh, all possible forms or all possible ways that the function f of x could be written and prove that these are the only ways that it could exist? Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.